You spoke with the great Ryan Pappenhausen oh. yesterday uh, <coughs> with a weekend report that suggesting a, a, mm. another rival club, a, a third, another third party, a lot of third parties, lot of third, reaching yeah, third out parties. just to see whether they were interested in taking over his contract for which he's got two years to go. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I, I loved Ryan's response. Yeah, I mean, he was pretty, um, what's the word? He was pretty um, sanguine about it. Is that the right word about it all? I mean, he said it's part of the business. business. Yeah, you like that word? That's right. <laughs> but he said it's part of the business of rugby league. What word know? was that? The, the players, when they have sang, sanguine, sanguine, I think it is, sanguine. S A N G U I N E. I think it's right. Do you reckon when pretty people, relaxed do you, reckon, you reckon when people read our column that we do together, they can tell who's written what? Because <laughs> <laughs> sanguine is not in my book. You can take the boy out of the horse, but you can't take the horse out of the boy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but he was pretty relaxed about it. I mean, he acknowledged that he hasn't played a lot of footy in a long time because of injuries and that, you know, clubs and... Look, I've, I've got to say, Melman, in in response to that story, have contacted me and said it wasn't us. We, it had nothing to do with us. They're not happy about some of the some of the way it was portrayed. Um, but, you know, obviously, Ryan is... It, whilst the club and Frank Panissi and Craig Bellamy reached out to him and said, we, you're still wanted, we still want you at the club... Yeah. I think Ryan's realistic enough to realise that maybe there's some people on the fringes of the club who may have reached out to other clubs about him. What do you mean fringes of the club? Oh, yeah. You've always got people around the edges. Mm, You know, or agents are involved in this sort of thing. Um, Or other clubs even. Or other clubs potentially who are trying to unsettle. I'll tell you what Melbourne would think. They think this um, has come from a certain club that has its eyes on Sua Falongo, wants Sua Falongo, trying to unsettle things in Melbourne. And as a result of that, maybe Falongo becomes... Um, unsettled? Unset- well, not unsettled, but the potentially Melbourne take their eyes off the ball a little bit and Falongo becomes somehow available. And then mm. the trickle on it, the ripple effect is that they can get their hands on him. Um, having spoken to Ryan, look, I mean, he's of the belief that all three of them, him, Nick Meany and Sewer, can all fit in the team together, which is realistic. I think Meany will play in the centres next year. Yeah. I think Ryan is their will be their starting fullback, provided he's fit, and I would imagine he will be fit. He thinks he'll be back at training in January. Mm. And then far longer will be their 14. And that's the way you get all three of them in the team. Yeah. But, you know, he's realistic enough to know that he hasn't played a lot of footy and, and there's going to be murmurs about him. And mm. I, he's not offended by it. I didn't take it as though he was... Um, at odds with the club over it, or no, not you know, he was quite, as I said, relaxed, and sanguine about it. Yeah. Relaxed about it. And I love the fact that he he was he said, look, you know, I'm sure the club the club told me they still want me. I'm, yeah. I'm wanted, um, you know, and whatever whoever was making that suggestion, I know they were making a mistake if yeah. they did move me on. I <coughs> love the confidence about it. Yeah. And flowing into the fact that you've said that he's told you that he visited his surgeon this week and told he can start walking without the aid of the moon boot yeah. from next week. can take it off for two hours a day from next week and then six hours a day the week after. Hopes to be training, full training in January. Should be fit for the start of the season. Um, and look, I think we all just hope he has a bit of luck because mm. he needs some. He's due, yeah. oh, well yeah. overdue some, right? Yeah. And look, I think Melbourne can comfortably fit those three guys in there, yeah. 17, because let's face it, they're... They're so invested in their one six seven nine financially, and then yeah. you've obviously got um, Nelson Sofa Solomon, Christian Welsh on yeah. you know on the money there. So they've got money though. They're in the market for a you know Mick. Obviously, um, the story last week about the swap between Justin Olam and Sean Bloor potentially. Mm. Um, so there'll be a spot in the centres if Olam goes, which many will fill. Correct. Um, and you know they're desperate to sign a middle forward, just a tough nut mm. to help them out in the centre of the field and. Or, well, Bloor would play a bit of edge and middle, I think. That's the plan. Yeah. Um, and maybe they move, or maybe he plays edge and they move Liero to the middle. Um, so they're still looking to, to, to sign by. So a bit of cash still. Mm. What about these certain clubs potentially making, just agitating, just little moves that go on in the, in the background? The, which the club do you reckon it was? I, I, I know which club they think it was. I'm going to give you a little stab at it. <laughs> Speaking of clubs that play games, who do you think it might be? <laughs> you put me under the microscope here because if I mention a club that I think it might be, then yeah. I might get in trouble. I think we all know who it probably is. Yes, well, there's clubs out there with salary cap room. Michael, you've gone very quiet. Clubs that like to play games, Mick. That's our Melbourne correspondent. So <laughs> well, it was <laughs> until they're off me now. They're off me over the story anyway. We'll make up. Don't need to do the laundry on this podcast. I've learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody gronk. Yeah, but you've come around full circle. 
Anyway, yeah, yeah, like if, I'm, if I'm Melbourne, as I just said, uh, I'm just repeating what Reedy said. Like you have all three in your squad, mm. in, in your 17. If I'm going to becomes the um, first player picked in the back five, if there's an, an injury and you can shift Nick Meany around or whatever the mm. case may be, Nick Meany's a really. Good, I, I think Nick Meany's intriguing because, yeah. well, it's an interesting. He's a November one guy, like so he's got 12 yeah. months left. You know, does a club pay him significant money to to be their their starting fullback in, in the NRL as that mid tier sort of number one? I think he's proven he can do that. He's a goal kicker. I don't think so, Nick. I mean, he's not an elite. He's a very very good fullback. He had a very good year, right? I said mid tier fullback. Well, but who's going to sign him on big money to go and be a mid tier fullback? But you, what money? What's big money for a mid tier fullback? You, you could get him for five, I guess. Six. Would you pay him five, six? Potentially. Okay. Which club would be on the lookout for? A mid tier no. fullback. Well, if you're True. looking at uncertain clubs at, at fullback, I mean, Dragons would be one where you're not sure with Sloan off contract in, in 2024. Um, they're obviously talking to Connor Tracy, um, the, well, the Dragons. Connor's been away or something, hasn't he? Or Flano's been away. What's happened with that? Dude? Yeah, they're talking. I, yeah. think the, I think the dogs are looking at him too, you know? Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Another squad player. Um, Come on, Come on. Come on you Bulldogs. <laughs> you're coming. You're not fair. <laughs> no, he's a good player, but I mean, they've got a lot of good players. They've got a lot of, they seem to be signing a lot of good players. Yeah. Mm. Um, Aside from Steve Crichton. A lot of good players. A lot of good players. They need great players. 